What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Tonight we are in the shop and we are going to see if we can save this Cherokee from all that gross rust. So in the last video on this Cherokee, I kind of went over all the hurdles and the things that we had to do to this Cherokee before we can get it back on the road and on the trail. Uh, I kind of went over the rust issues, which was the main issue of mine. So in this video, I'm going to go over how we're going to be fixing it. I'm going to turn the flashlight on and try to get it where y'all can see. So you can see right here the rust damage that we're up against. And it's pretty bad. You know, unibody shouldn't be able to do that. What my plan is right here is I'm just gonna take maybe an inch or so off of this and then cut up. So what I'm looking for is good metal that's remaining on here that I can actually weld to. So I'm gonna start cutting on this and I'll check back with y'all in a few minutes. So I roughly have all the rust cut out and you can see right here I do have some surface rust on the inside that I'm gonna have to remove but this is good metal right so I'm gonna come in here and start grinding some of the surface rust out so to really get inside of this unibody right here I plan on using this uh, mini belt sander and what I'm going to do is just kind of just go in there and just to rough up all the surface rust and get it out of the way. So I went over everything with the mini belt sander and kind of got all that surface rust off. Now I'm gonna take some sandpaper and go up in here just to get the rest of that surface rust off with some brake cleaner. And then I'm gonna hit it with some steel it. So of course, whenever you get the surface rust off any inside of the unibody, you definitely want to get the fresh metal painted. That way it doesn't flash rust and then eventually rust all the way through. Then you'll be back in the same boat that you are now so I'm gonna hit this with some paint and we'll let it dry and then we'll start cutting out pieces of cardboard so check out all this nastiness that I cut out you can see all the rusty and crusty metal so this was just kind of just chilling in the unibody all right so it is a rainy night here in the shop and we are going to continue working on the Cherokee uh, the last thing that y'all saw was me painting the freshly cut unibody with some steel it. So I'm going to start making some cardboard templates. That way we can go ahead and start repairing that unibody. So I've got some random pieces of cardboard here that I'm going to get up underneath the Jeep and start just kind of marking and cutting with some scissors and a razor blade just to kind of get an idea of how much metal that I'm going to need. All right, so we're underneath the Jeep, and I apologize for the rain. As soon as I started talking, it started like flowing down rain, so I apologize about the crappy audio. I 
I have the outer template and I have the inner template of the unibody. This is just the sides right now. Uh, what I'm going to go with is a 16 gauge metal and check this out. I've never got this lucky before. So this exact length that I need. So I'm going to go ahead and mark this and go ahead and cut it. And then we'll go ahead and do the same thing for this one. I do have some extra sheets of this. So I've got these cut out and now I'm going to take them to the Jeep and see how well they fit and see how bad I messed up. Oh yeah. Yeah, that'll work right there. And then we have the back piece right here. So, sweet. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean these up and get them ready to tack on. So I threw these on the paint booth here and got a light coat of steel it on them so that way whenever it goes on the inside of the unibody it's not just raw bare metal which is going to rust again. So I'm probably going to let these dry just a few more minutes and then I'm going to go ahead and get my welder and everything set up and go ahead and tack these in. All right, so I'm gonna let this side cool off just a little bit. Uh, I don't wanna get this unibody too terribly hot. So next I have the outside piece right here. Did drill some rosette holes, I got to clean them up. But what I plan on doing is whenever I put this piece of metal up here, um, you know, instead of just having the stitch welds all around, I can actually put some rosette welds and just kind of pull that unibody and this piece of metal more so together. So I'm just trying to figure out exactly where I want it to go, which is right on that line right there. I have this pretty much tacked the way I want to. Um, it's not pretty, but it's definitely a lot stronger than the previous rust that was on there. But I'm gonna go ahead and let this cool off and, and then we'll come back tomorrow with some more tack welds and everything like that. And holy crap, I am very dirty. I look like Simba. Simba. So now that everything is pretty much cooled off, I'm going to clamp these two together. Let's see if I can get it where you can see better. So where the new sheet metal meets the unibody, I'm gonna be clamping that together. 
and tacking that up. You can see what I'm doing is I'm just taking this clamp and clamping the unibody to the new metal and just tacking it. And I'm just slowly working it so that it is level all the way through and there's no gaps or anything like that. So I'm going to keep doing this very slowly. I'm doing everything at a really slow pace. That way I don't heat anything up too much. But once I get that all tacked up, I can make a template for the bottom cardboard here. So I'm going to keep working this, keep moving this all around, keep tacking until everything is good and solid there. So little update, um, I did kind of get carried away. I went ahead and cut out the bottom piece right here and started just tacking it up. And what I'm doing is I'm just slowly start, I'm slowly starting to pull the unibody in together and tack it up at the bottom. Cause this bottom piece is a little thicker and it's gonna be the main support for these side rails here. So like I said, I'm just slowly working everything, letting everything cool off, kind of jumping around with my tacks. And uh, we're slowly getting it. All right guys, I got a little further along than I thought I was going to tonight. Uh, my camera battery did die, so I didn't get a lot of footage, but check this out. So my method was you know, spot weld, spot weld, spot weld, spot weld, and then I came back with a grinder and kind of just, I was left with these little pinholes like that. So, kind of what I've been doing is like spot welding, then grinding down, and then I'm coming back and filling those little spot welds in, and then going back over it until everything's sealed up. I am going to be hitting everything with seam sealer. I kind of had some trouble with the ground right there in my weld, to be honest with you. So probably have to redo that weld, but that's not an issue. So I'm going to start going all the way around up here and getting everything done. And then we'll be ready for some paint. So last night before I went in the house, I went ahead and painted everything right here with some Steel-It. And it is now dry. So what I'm going to do is go over everything with some of this pro grade seam sealer all right so i have all these seam sealer on and i'll be honest with you uh i probably put way too much on but i'd rather have more than not enough so i'm just gonna let that kind of add here and cure and everything like that anything is better than the rust that was down there so it is another cold night in the shop tonight and i have chris here with me breaking stuff and what we're going to be doing tonight is cleaning out this interior all right so our plan of attack is to get this center console out first and then we're going to take the shop vac and just clean up as much of this nastiness as possible. And hopefully this is still all good metal. So we're just taking all the screws out to get the center console out. That way we don't have to get anything on them. What's that, an old... Uh, Love mixtape. All right. You had it? Yep. Here you go. Sorry about that. All right. That's some free money. There you go. That's your tip. <laughs>
we have all the sound deadeners kind of roughed up on the edges and we did pull a lot of them up where there was some rust but you can see right here there was no rust underneath them so that's good so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this flap disc and I'm just gonna start going over everywhere that has decent amounts of rust and I want to make sure that I don't need to replace this uh, sheet metal right here before we Raptor liner it so um, this is kind of one of those situations where you just embrace the suck and just get to it so the black lung bob So whenever we were cleaning up the inside of this Cherokee here, I did find a broken uh, seat bolt that we need to fix before we, you know, put any Raptor liner down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my welder out and go ahead and get this bolt out. All right, so here is the broken bolt right here. And what I plan on doing is just taking a nut and putting on top of it and then welding the nut to the broken bolt and then I'm gonna let it sit a couple of minutes and then I'm gonna slowly start trying to turn it out. Once the heat penetrates that bolt it'll seep down into the threads and then it'll make it a lot easier for me to turn it out. So whenever you weld these you're not supposed to just you know instantly take a wrench and turn it because it'll just break even further. You're supposed to let it just penetrate all the way through the bolt. I'm just going to let that marinate down here and go ahead and let that heat go all the way through the threads and hopefully if my calculations are correct I'll be able just to turn it right off with that three quarter inch wrench. So we're going to let that hang out a minute and we'll come right back to it. So we're going to be trying to slowly work this off right here. I'm just going to go slow. And it's not ideal to put a gear wrench on a very hot bolt, but I don't care. Just like that. Oh, you can see. You can see right there why it broke. It's very hot. All right, so it is another night in the shop and I do have a little shop helper in here tonight. Say hey, Easton. Hey, vlog. What Easton is doing is he's taking just some sandpaper and just roughing up some of this paint. That way the Raptor liner sticks to it and adheres to it a little better. So as you can see, I've already started some taping and I'm gonna get some trash bags and kind of put over that tan uh, plastic interior right there. I'm too lazy to take it out. And once I do that and he gets done sanding, then I'll take everything, or I'll go back over everything with a shop vac and then we probably can start doing the Raptor liner. What you think, Easton? All right. My hands are already broke. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> hands are broke. Yes. Can't find good help anymore. I made some progress right here and right here. Well, that's really good progress. All right, so the kit that we're going with is from, I believe it was O'Reilly's. It's the Raptor Protective Coating. And so I've got uh, eight fluid ounces of the hardener that I'm about to pour into this. So we have everything done on the interior and we're just going to let it dry before we put anything in here. Probably a couple of days before we put the seats or anything in here, but now we're just going to clean up the material and probably call it a night. And check out the interior now. It is black. But this Raptor liner stuff is awesome. All right, so it is another rainy day in the shop and we are working on the Cherokee. And as you can see, we have the uh, massive jack stands underneath the rear. But right now, what we're doing is breaking the U-bolts loose on the leaf springs because we're going to be dropping the suspension back here because we're putting a new suspension on the rear. So might as well go ahead and do that while we're under there. I can't believe they broke loose. Cleaned up the threads. Normally they break off. So check this out. When we were trying to drop the axle, look what we found. Broken leaf springs. It's crazy. I've never seen that. So now what we're trying to do is we're trying to drop the axle. And you know, these leaf springs, they have pins right here. And what we believe is happening that the the pin on the back side of this perch, it's rusted and it's kind of seized up in there. So taking a big chisel and just trying to just trying to break it free. There we go. So now that I have the axle dropped down, I'm gonna start working on getting these leaf springs out. And as rusty as this Jeep has been so far, I believe this is kinda of gonna be a pain right here. Especially these bolts, most of the time these are seized up and you gotta cut them out and it's just not pretty. So I'm gonna to try to take a breaker bar and try to get this out first. I'll be using a 7 8 socket and I have been letting them soak with PB Blaster for a couple days because I knew I was going to be doing this. So I'm going to come to the passenger side and get that on there and see if I can break this off. <sighs> so. 
So now that I have this broke loose with the breaker bar, I'm going to be sending it with a impact Sick. So I have a 7 8 wrench right here, a 7 8 socket, and I'm gonna see if I can break this loose. All right, so now I'm gonna do the same thing on the driver's side. So now that I have the leaf springs out of the way, I got the axle out of the way, I can kinda of have more room to look how bad this rust is right here. So I've got some options. Um, I could cut this whole section out, and I've seen where people kinda, of, they cut these out anyway and they fold them up, that way you don't have this low hanging fruit whenever you're going up rocks or obstacles or anything like that. Another option is I could cut all this out and just replace everything that way you know it looks factory but um, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I talked with Chris you know the owner of the Jeep and he doesn't care as long as there's no rust. So I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is First, I'm gonna cut all this rust out. So, the rust goes about to right here. Uh, I don't know if you're able to see that on camera, but, um, I mean, it's pretty bad. But, so I'm thinking I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this out right here. So, I don't really have a plan, to be honest with you. I'm just gonna cut until I find decent metal. And I'll probably be drilling this out. I may go ahead and drill this out. I did cut out the square right here and uh, there's a little bit more rust in here than what I would like. So what I plan on doing is I'm actually going to bring this cut all the way back and I'm, I will be coming back and probably coming to this line up here. But I'm going to come all the way back and cut out this whole uh, corner right here because it is it's pretty uh, crusty up under here. So I'm gonna get to cutting, and I was really hoping that I could repair all this, and I probably could, but at this point, I think it'd just be easier to cut all this out. So that's what I'm gonna do. Well, it's already looking better. Nothing is better than rust. What an odd thing to say. Of course I have to clean up these edges and everything like that, but I don't think it looks bad. It looks a little rock crawlerish, but, and I did leave a little more meat on here than what I believe that I need, but I would rather take away than have to add back, so. But look at all this junk. That's all rust and dirt. Terrible.
But the first thing that I'm going to do is make some relief cuts right here and then I'm going to start massaging this metal to kind of bend around that way I have something to weld to. Alright, so I got all my relief cuts done and everything on this side and I did go ahead and clean my work area. And then I decided since I was already disgusting that I was going to start on the driver's side. Holy crap. Look at all this rust and dirt. Maybe just dirt that I found inside of the Jeep. And then I found that. So it's a good thing we did cut this side because this one was on its way out too. Bigger picture. It's probably not for everybody, but I feel like it kind of matches the front. See how it's kind of cut right there. I don't know. What do you think? Put in the comments. You think I'm crazy? So what I've done so far on the passenger side here is I've made a, a template right here that'll be getting welded on just to cover up everything. So... This is kind of kind of one I'm wanting right here. And like I said, I folded these down right here so I have so I have some surface area to weld to and like likewise on the inside right here. And I think this is going to look really cool. Yeah. So, I'm going to get this cut out of some sheet metal and we'll build this back. I have my plate right here and I'm just kind of test fitting it. I cut it a little bit bigger than what the cardboard said do. And look I'm kind of glad I did now because this is perfect. So just like I always do whenever I am doing rust repair, on the inside right here where I'm not going to be able to get spray paint or any type of paint, I went ahead and painted this so that way I don't have to worry about it rusting or anything like that. So just getting this up for its final mock-up. <laughs> welded the hammer to the body. So just like I did the rust repair on the unibody, what I did was after I got done tack welding, I hit it with some steel it. Once it got dry to the touch, what I did was I pushed the seam sealer into the tack welds. That way there is seam sealer in between the tack welds. If it is the next night, I let the seam sealer have 24 hours to cure. And what I have done, because I really wasn't happy with the finish of the seam sealer right here, was actually I took a little bit of sandpaper and just kind of smoothed it down right here. Kind of see where my tack welds are right here. So I may put some more seam sealer right there just to make it look better. But check out the driver's side. So I did the driver's side just a little bit different. Um, and I think this is more so the way to go. So I'll kind of show you on the driver's side what I did different. So. On the passenger side, I had my tack welds right here where they would be visible. On this one, I actually put the metal up inside of it and then bent these corn, bent this down just like I would a brake and kind of tapped it up with a hammer and then tack welded it all through and then seam sealed it. 
And see, from right here, you can see I have a perfect line. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit this right here with a coat of steel it just like I did everything else. And you can see I did paint the inside of the wheel well black. All right, so I have the steelet painted on. I got the tape out of the way, and I don't think it looks bad at all. So here's the passenger side, and that with that black steelet, it kind of cleaned up that line really well. But the driver's side looks really good. I think it'll look a lot better once we have that bumper back on because right now it's just kind of like this just kind of looks weird but i think once that bumper on and we kind of clearance that bumper just a little bit it'll kind of bring the whole look together but anyway guys that's going to do it for this video i really appreciate y'all watching me fix the rust and cut off the corners on the rear of this cherokee if you don't mind, hit that like button and make sure that you are subscribed so that you don't miss out on any of the future content of this build. It's going to be a pretty cool Cherokee, not doing anything crazy, but definitely got to get some of this uh, aggravating maintenance stuff out of the way before we can really start throwing some cool parts at it. But anyway, I appreciate y'all watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Yes, that's a cord. Can. <laughs>